you think back to like, you guys plotted lines, it's something like y equals mx. Let me make something easy. 2x plus 1. And you had a table of values. I'm sure you've done this at some point. And you just plugged in. You take x values and plug them into the equation and it spits out new y values. Do we all kind of, that's all this is. That's all I want you to do with this. And you can always, no matter how complicated the equation looks, you can always do that. Now it gets back to what I was saying yesterday. I think our job as you go through math is to teach you the most efficient way to do things so that you don't spend 15 minutes on a test. Like if I asked you to graph a line, that's all that is, it's 2x plus 1. You've all been shown y equals mx plus b on how to graph that. You don't want to have to type it in here to produce points, to plot the points, to create the graph. You don't want to have to do that. So it's important to keep that in mind. It's like anytime we're doing stuff in here, we're trying to show you the most efficient way to do things. Okay, so. That being said, it's not that it's an invalid approach. Okay, so that's what we're just going to do here because it's a function that you don't necessarily know. Okay, we're just going to try and produce some data points, plot them, and then determine whether or not it's a function or, or a relation. Does that make sense? That's all we're doing. So this we could call like it's a representation of distance, distance and time, for instance. Okay, so distance is equal to 5 times the time squared. That's what that equation would tell me, okay? So, I'm trying to remember what else to put in here. Uh, there's nothing written for the recall piece, so I don't necessarily know what to write here, aside from like, you always gotta sometimes like cater different lessons to different classes, right? So we could say we could produce uh, points Okay, I'll use that. How about I'll change this to T for time, okay? Plugging in time values. Okay? Make sense? Are we all right? So the dependent variable is the one that goes on the Y axis. That's going to be the distance. Okay? And I suppose on the y-axis. And the independent variable in this particular instance is going to be time, and that's on the x-axis. Okay? So, in our little table of values here, we're going to put d, nope, not there. I want t here and d there. So the other thing, always try and like, it's always kind of x and y there, right? independent on the left and then the dependent one on the right, right? So we're just going to take some values, whatever they might be. I would say maybe start at 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we'll see what happens, okay? So much like what I was just writing on the board there, um, if it, it doesn't matter what the how complicated the equation looks, right? You could plug in values of t, where you see the t's and then it's going to spit out values for the distances okay and that's all we're doing okay, we can produce points and then we plot those points it gives us the shape of the graph for that particular function right or relation should be got to gotta be careful with the wording now okay function versus relation we don't necessarily know if it's a function or not we're going to check it right so if i were to plug in zero right i'm going to get D is going to equal 5 times 0 squared. Well, what's that? 0 squared is 0 times 5. Zero. It's just 0. So we're going to start at the origin for this one. Okay, and then if I plug in 1, <laughs> 1 squared. Remember, we're following bed mass. We've got to do the exponents. 
uh, 1 squared would be 1 times 5 would be 5. Okay, and then if I were to do it again, I'd get 5 times 2 squared. 2 squared would be 4. 4 times 5, 20. Okay, you continue doing that. You're going to see 45 and 80. Okay, and if I were... Oh, I don't have a great grid for this. i got to fix this. I don't like that. Okay, if I go over and I plot these points, I don't know necessarily what the count by. It's not going to look too good. If I'm at zero. Oh, first of all, do you even need to graph it? I'm here, so here I am sitting here. This is, again, I haven't done this lesson in a long time. And I've learned, I personally learned a lot since the last time I taught this. Do I even need to plot this graph or to plot these data points to figure out whether or not something's a function or not? It be, it's helpful, sure, right? You could plot these data points and then produce what it looks like, but that's not really what we're after for this particular question. Again, if it helps you, it helps you, right? It's the same thing as showing five steps instead of three. Is it the most efficient way to get to the answer that we're actually after for this particular question? No, I don't think you need the graph, okay? Remember what we've got here. We've got a table. It's a bunch of data points there, right? We've got zero, zero. We've got one and five. We've got two and 20. Everybody see what I'm saying? Don't actually need to graph it. You just gotta look at the data points do you, and, and then make a decision whether or not it's a relation versus a function. So what do you think? Remember what the definition is. It can either pass the vertical line test or you could fall back on the other definition. For every x or for every independent variable, there is only one unique dependent variable. Is that or is that not the case for this table of values? It seems like I think it is, right? If I look across here, I don't see any repeats in the data in the x values. And so when I look across, I see a bunch of unique points that have unique x values. And so I know off the bat here, without having to produce the graph at all, I know that this is going to be, uh, it's a function. And you could say, if I say explain why you think that's the case, you could say for every x, you could either graph it, if there's a graph there, for every x, there is one unique y value. So we are right? Okay. Not too bad of a concept. It, it can get a little like, it mess with your head sometimes depending on the question. Like anything else, I suppose, the more challenging ones can mess with you a little bit, but not too, too bad. Okay. So I'm going to jump down. Oh, what happened to my graph? I heard is it a graph. Um, okay. Just as a quick recap. What's this graph? The other nice thing about this is most of the time, if you recognize an equation, you don't necessarily have to produce the graph to know whether or not it's a function. We've already said for this one, if, as long as you recognize it, what is this? It's a grade nine graph, yes? It's linear, so it's like y equals mx plus b. Yeah, it just follows the, the y equals mx plus b form, right? You know y equals mx plus b is a linear, okay? And we already said, as long as the graph is not a vertical line, you know that a linear function or <laughs> linear relation is a function. I gotta be careful of my terminology now, as do you do, okay? So if you were to actually produce, I'll just take this opportunity to graph this, like we'll just review this. We're gonna do this a bunch more uh, after we get through this little stretch of grade 11 lessons, okay? Um, how do I graph this? Does anybody remember? Where does it start and then how do I move? Another word is my y-intercept is what and my slope is what? Yeah? The slope is the 
Okay, so the slope is two, and another way to write that, remember we always said, this is what I was getting at yesterday, you can always divide by one, which will come in handy in a second. I'll show you that, okay? And then the y-intercept is just three. It's the other number that's sitting there, right? And so I was pushing the grade nines because I think Ms. Farahani wants to maybe see, don't just write three, maybe write, just, just to be on the safe side, don't just write three, write zero, three, and put it as a point because that's what it is. Okay, it's, a, it's an intercept, it's a y-intercept. Okay, and I think anytime you're writing intercepts or points at any point, like if you're talking about a point on a graph, it better be x value, y value, I think, just as a good habit, okay? And so the y-intercept is gonna be at zero, positive three, that's the y-intercept. So I'm gonna go graph that. Okay, and then the, the slope is how you move around. Well, slope was defined by rise over run. And for this particular example, it's two over one. Which means I'm gonna go up because it's positive and then right because it's also positive. So I'm gonna go up two, right one. That's how I would graph that. Okay, if one of those two numbers was negative, which is why I was showing you yesterday, all three of those things were equal. If the one was negative, or if the one was negative, it would be up two, left one. Okay, that's not what we have there, but that's why I was showing you that yesterday. All three of those things are equal, okay? So you're gonna get up two, right one, up two, right one. The opposite of going up and to the right is going down and to the left, and that continues that line. So down two, left one down to left one that's probably enough to create your line definitely enough to figure out whether or not the thing is a function or not okay and so there you go that's this is a be a passes the vertical line test always sorry i'll be more neat okay i'll start you can you can even write vlt for vertical line test passes vertical line test function. Oh, you all have a grid. Good. Okay. Any questions? Are we all right? We'll do the next one. Okay. Another example of just like, doesn't matter how ugly the equation looks, you can just pick some points. Um, I always like just picking... Uh, I don't know. I always pick something around the origin for these questions. It's not always going to work, but it'll be all right. Okay, so, and this is what I was, okay, I'm going to take a sec here. Mm, I'm running out of room here. Remember when I said when people type this into the calculator to get wrong answers? This is where they get wrong answers because they type this in as, not maybe not this one in particular, but if they saw something like this and then there was no coefficient out front of x squared, am I using too many big words? Are we are right? too many big words. So if there's no number in front of x squared, everybody see what I'm saying right here? If there's not a like, if there was no number there and it was just a one, this is what kids will do. They'll go like this. When they go to do this, this question, they'll go negative two squared plus five times negative two plus three. They'll type it in their calculator, and their calculator won't distribute that negative onto the, or the, the squared onto the negative. And so they get something that looks like this, negative 4 minus 10 plus 3. That's the very, very, very common error that ends up happening when kids go to do this and produce the graph of the parabola, right? Put the brackets in, and then you're good. You don't have to worry about anything, okay? So in the interest of time here, you can all check this, okay? But when I plug in negative two, you should get, sorry, with the actual two there. When you plug in the negative two, you should get one. When you plug in negative one, you'll get zero. Make sure I'm reading this off right. Zero becomes three, that's an easy one. Okay, one is 10, and this should be, I don't know what two is. We'll do the last one, because I picked different points, okay? Just for, 
so everybody sees what happens when you, if you wanted to go check all these you can okay this is what we're doing and I would encourage you if you can't produce these values here then to come see me or, and we'll figure out what went wrong okay but this is all I'm doing I'm taking an input of two and I'm plugging it in everywhere I see an X and the other thing is and I'll show you this later when we get into this you can build this in your scientific calculators you don't have to type this in every time you can go back once you've built this equation in your calculator you can go back and change those blue pieces and just hit equals change the blue pieces hit equals and it goes like this very fast instead of having to type it all every single time and I'll show you that later okay save you some time all right so if we check this one this is what we should get we should get 2 times 4 plus 10 plus 3 well 2 times 4 is 8 plus 10 plus 3 is 18 plus 3 so I don't know if that's necessarily the best point to use I don't know it's probably off our grid but anyway in any event you could plot this and negative 2 1 is here negative 1 0 is here 0 3 Does that seem right that's not right We must have an error with this point. We'll check that. And 1 and 10 would be up here somewhere. I can't be right. This has to be symmetrical. It's got to be that. Did anybody check all these or no? Anybody check them? It has to be. Never mind. It has to be here. This doesn't make sense. It has to be there. We must have just, this must be three. I must have just typed this in wrong or wherever I got the answers from. We'll check it after. Okay. I think the main message here in terms of checking whether or not something's a function versus a relation, if you see. Um, All quadratics should be functions okay no matter what sort of parabola you ever draw and we're gonna do this if that graph looks completely like not familiar to you we're gonna spend probably a two months doing it right and so I think the important part for this particular lesson is just knowing that this is always going to pass your vertical line test to be a function yes you agree Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's why it's not working out. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can fix that. We'll fix it. Anyway, that's not really the point. Right? We'll, had we actually done, we're going to do this later in the course anyway. We're like actually producing the points. That's not the point. I just want you to recognize that like a quadratic, if I put a quadratic on the page, it's going to pass your vertical line test, okay? We'll fix that, okay? The last one, do we know what anybody, does anybody know what the last graph actually looks like? Yeah? It's a circle. How do we know, well, how do we know it's a circle? Yes? Yeah, I think if you rewrote this, that's right, funny enough, that's where Pythagorean theorem kind of came from, like, the identity of a circle, or vice versa, one of the two. Um, but we know Pythagorean theorem looks something like this. Did everybody agree? Another way to write it would be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But if we're talking about circles, this is what's cool about Pythagorean theorem. And actually you should, and this is all new to me too because I hadn't really done this in a long time. Do you guys remember, hmm, maybe you didn't do it. Did you do any of the, uh, the circle triangle properties in grade nine? Okay, we can talk about those later. They're kind of cool, actually. It kind of stems out of that, funny enough. We'll talk about that after. But anyway, another way to write Pythagorean theorem would be to take your x values squared plus your y values squared. It's equal to the radius squared for a circle. That's what R stands for, okay? 
And so currently the way it's written, um, it's not written in R squared, is it? Well, I mean, it's the result of R squared, but what's your radius for, for this particular circle? It's three. So another way to write this, if I said like, give me, well, that would be the equation of a circle. But to find the radius, it would be whatever value you need to square in order to get nine. And then for the, this particular example, it would be three squared. Why that's important is now you know the radius of your circle. So when you go to graph it on your grid there, I don't know why I don't have it because I basically cut, I don't know. I must have changed, added the grid after the fact. Um, when you go to graph this, you're going to have a radius of three the whole way around. And this may or may not work. We'll check in a sec. We'll see how my circles does. Oh, I was pretty close. All right. So the circle has a radius of three the whole way around. The whole way around, it's going to have a radius of three. And then again, for the purposes of this lesson, I, that was just an extra little tidbit there. Is this a function or not a function? Or is it a function versus a relation? Which one is it? It's just a related set of points, right? That happen to create a circle. It's not a function, OK? And it's not a function because it fails that vertical line test. All righty. We'll conclude that. Fails vertical line test, not a function.